Well, earlier, WITS SRC uh, held a briefing to address the issues surrounding the student protests. WITS University may suspend me, the country, the government may arrest me, but they won't stop the call of free education. Our struggle is of free education. If we have free education, then these problems are and free education was promised to us by the ruling party. Well, that's uh, the WITS SRC president, Apiwe Mnyamana, who's uh, joining us now for a little bit more. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Uh, greetings to you and greetings to the viewership. All right. So you vowed to make WITS ungovernable until your demands are met. What does that mean? What it means to say no classes should continue while there are students who are academically deserving and we are not allowed by the university to register. No classes should continue while we have a number of students who are sleeping in libraries, in bathrooms, in my office and even in my room. These students, some of them have registered but they do not have a place to sleep. Hence, we have requested the university to provide us with 1,000 more beds for these students. because. This, when we have these students sleeping on libraries while the academic year is, is proceeding, when you sleep in the library, we are not able to focus fully on your studies. We had some people saying these are failing students, and we've been saying as the SRC, there is a reason why these students failed. And here is the reason right now. These students sleep in libraries. How do we expect a student? slept in the bathroom. How to expect a student who sleep in, in the office to go and perform to his or her optimal best? Are you saying that all the students that failed didn't have accommodation or just some of them? I'm saying students do not fail because students like to fail. No, some, some fail because they just aren't able. Yes, and there is a reason for that inability. That's why we are saying we must have a research. Mm. When, when we come out of high school, when you join VETS, VETS requires you to have high standards of your metric results. When you enter VETS, you have seven distinctions, you have six distinctions, so you show that you have capacity. Mm. But there is something about accommodating, especially black students, from, from primary school, high school, and into adapting into university. Let's not criticize students. No student likes to fail. We, we go to university to improve our lives, you don't go to university to stay there for long. Okay. There are factors. 40,000 students at Wits University, are they all behind this or are you now choosing for a number of students, a good number, who are definitely prejudiced and that everybody else can't go to school until this group is sorted out? All students are behind this. These are not the only issues we are facing. We are facing the issues of NFSAS, and all students have pledged their support under this. In the video which we are showing mm. what happened on Friday, we had workers who, has, who were picketing with us, showing their solidarity because our call is genuine. All right, let's talk about what you're being sued for. Is it the SRC or individuals that happen to be on the SRC? Unfortunately, with the sue, we were advised by our legal team to not give any input. We have received the sue and the legal team is responding to Vet University. Wow. I am not a legal expert, so I cannot give anything about that. Sir. All right. I mean, you don't have to tell me the nature of the thing. I just want to know whether it's in your it's individual sue, capacity. No, we are just suing the SRC. The, the body? Yes. Okay. All right. So, and this letter came whilst you were going to meet with the university? On Friday, we were, we were assembling as students. And we got a call from the university mm. to say, we want to meet. I then called my SRC member to a brief meeting saying, I think VETS now is hearing our concern. Let's go and meet the university because we need their feedback. On our way to the meeting, we receive an email which says VETS is suing us. Then we had to contact our legal team immediately and we could not attend the meeting. And we saw that soon. I did even tell them today's meeting that you cannot ask for a negotiation in good faith, then threaten us with legal action. And it's even written in that sue. It's ENS, Africa's largest law company. So we saw that as intimidation, and we saw that VETS wants to negotiate, but in bad faith. 
So you haven't had an opportunity to talk to uh, Vitz leadership uh, since that moment then? No, no, no. We have spoken mm. to Vitz leadership. Yeah. Today, after the press briefing, the Vitz management said they want to meet with us and we went to the meeting. But unfortunately, one of the demands from the SROC was to say, we've been meeting with the Dean of Students from last year when I was elected, even now. And the Dean of Students is saying, he does not have the power to take this decision. Only the Vice Chancellor has the power. So we've been requesting a meeting with the Vice Chancellor. Even now, I haven't seen the Vice Chancellor. Even now, I haven't received a phone call from the Vice Chancellor. But today, the Vice Chancellor did send people from his office. So we, we saw that as an act of good faith. Hence, we went to the negotiating table and we negotiated with VET. However, our demand of meeting the Vice Chancellor has not yet been met. And also, it shows that really, really our issues, issues are bad at campus. Mm. You can see students are angry. Students want access to education. And you as a person, if such things are happening in your campus, you ought to stop whatever you are doing and come to attend to the matters. It seems as if every time this, at this time of the year, you have this um, battle with the university leadership, students get excluded, some can't register, etc., etc. And it's the same issues year after year. What happens during the year that should be happening to prevent what we're seeing now? Because these are not new issues. These are not new issues. Hence, we are saying as well as Sarah said, these are issues of government also. The Department of Higher Education must, come, must account. Hence, we've even written in our statement that we do not have confidence in Blade Zibande and Buti Manamel because we cannot, for seven years, we've been leading the sector. Every year, we are having the same issue. For example, the issue of NFSAS. The Department of Higher Education and NFSAS said the cap to accommodation is 45,000. There is no accommodation in Johannesburg that is 45,000. In VETS, VETS alone, the cheapest bed is 60,000. So when you charge 60,000 and NFSAS gives you 45, there is a 15,000 15, deficit. I'm making an example. Mm -hmm. We are saying as an SRC, NFSAS must, because this, this law began this year. And let me show you how it will affect students next year. So students will be owing 15,000 if NFSAS doesn't give us the exemption. Next year, those students will, will have passed very well, but they won't be able to register because there's that 15,000 which is outstanding from last year. And VET says you must owe 10,000 or less in order for you to register. VET has over 56% students who are on NFSAS. So imagine all those 56% students owing this 15,000. It's not 15,000, 15, it's over than that. I'm just making an example. So next year we're going to have this challenge. So it's a challenge which must be answered by NFSAS. Is the your, challenge must be at, yes. Is your issue then with NFS, NSFAS not giving you enough money or is it with WITS University? Because WITS needs money to run the university. It can't run on nothing. The issues are two here, yes, mm. What we are saying as WITS is our thing. NFSAS usually give us uncapped for our accommodation. I'm just speaking about yeah. VATE and NFSAS now. Mm. It was uncapped. So they said they've introduced legislation to say we are capping. Mm. And how do, and then we said to VATE, if NFSAS gives us 45,000 and you charge us 60,000, we can have this issue. Please speak to NFSAS to continue to give us an uncapped amount. Because if this thing continue, I'm telling you, next year we're going to have this issue. Yes. Hence, as an SRC, we want it to be resolved now. But shouldn't you then be marching to NFSAS, not to VITS? We are marching to both NFSAS and VITS. Because NFSAS, if NFSAS says we are giving 45,000 and nothing else, then VITS prices must be 45,000. Or NFSAS must then remove the cap. That's our argument. Okay. You cannot charge us. Can VITS afford? to drop the price. That's what we are negotiating with management. But then how do we expect, let's say VETS cannot afford to drop mm -hmm. the price. So we are saying next year, all NFSA students won't be able to access VETS. That's the reality. Let's talk about the protests. I mean, you have a right to protest and express your anger, but do you have a right to 
throw bins on the floor and force businesses to shut. What we have been doing with our protests, mm. uh, our protest has been very peaceful. As an SRC president, you know VAIDS is known of protest and I've instructed all my members, to, yeah, this is a peaceful protest. Even when we're moving around Pramfontein, the police came to me and they told us, you can walk around, but once you cause the blockage, that will be a problem. Mm. You saw us in Pramfontein on Friday, no one was shot, we were moving peacefully. So that's what to distract our students. So the images that we see of students um, throwing things all over the place, uh, upturning bins and forcing businesses to shut down, who are they? Are they students? They, yes, they are students. That I have to admit. But yeah. these are the students who are suffering from what I've mentioned, from financial exclusion, mm. from lack of accommodation. And these students are angry, yeah. angry at the government and angry at the institution for not answering, for not living up mm. to their promise. Because here in South Africa, education is a right, not a privilege. And I'm not justifying violence yeah. by that. But I'm saying students have been calling on to the government and there is no response. And you must know in South Africa how we behave from the history of South Africa. If you, if you try to negotiate and negotiate and nothing happens, then you must try to intensify your talks by demonstration. I'm not saying by throwing pins yeah. and everything, by peaceful demonstration. But there was violence as well on campus. You had these altercations with the security officials there, uh, which turned violent. Tell, tell me about that. The issue we're having with, with those things is that in campus, we had bouncers whom we complained to VETS management to say, we are asking for access to education. And you are saying to us, no, you should then take your small budget and give it to these bouncers rather than giving us what, you, what we need, which is access. And I do believe that VETS has the amount. Last year, VETS was 1,100 years. We have fundraised over 2.7 billion, and VETS does have the money. This concession was done back, back in 2020 under Adam Habib. It was 120,000. So what you're asking for is not something which is new or out of the blue. It's we have been reasonable with management, and even today, we, tell them why, we told them why we need this concession, and they said they will go to the senior executive team and come back to us tomorrow. All right, so what, what's going to happen next? You said that you're going to make sure the university remains ungovernable. Does that mean you continue with protests and you stop students from studying? What we, what we discussed today in management, there was a commitment to management to say, we hear your concerns, we are going to go to the senior executive team and we'll give you an update. And we said to students, if we do not meet these, these demands, we are con going to continue to peacefully protest in the campus up until our demands are met. And what about students who want to study? What about students who want to study but yes. cannot afford to study because of these financial blocks? And that's the question you should be asking. Uh, that and is, that's the question that students are asking me. That is definitely one question, and for sure that needs to be answered. Yes. But there are other students. As an SRC, yeah. I represent all students. And if there is a portion of students in my campus who do not feel represented, I am obligated to represent them. And I will continue to represent them up until their demands are met. Because these are student demands which are genuine. These are not my personal demands. I've, I am enrolled for a postgraduate on, on us for a postgraduate. Mm. So I am fine. But I won't say because Apriya Miyamana has accommodation and has registered, he will stop advocating for student rights. That thing I cannot promise. As I've said in the morning, we will continue to fight for this marginalized group because education in South Africa is a right and not a privilege. And we won't allow Vets University to continue to make education a privilege. Vets University historically has been a white university, which is exclusionary. Now yeah. it's entering into a new century. And as Vets SRC, we have declared this century a century of inclusion. Vets must be a worker-friendly university 
Vets must be a student-friendly university. All right. But finally, because we ran out of time, um, you're negotiating with student uh, with the university. Um, does that? Did you ask them to stop the suit? Who? The university leadership, because you've with, you with university talks, leadership, yeah. they said it's a, it's a legal team, and our lawyers will be communicating with each other. We did not discuss, discuss it. Yes. Okay, we'll leave it there. Apio, thanks very much indeed for joining us and uh, clearing up a few uh, thoughts uh, for us. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much, sir. All right.